Hello, you're watching PC Jack. So it's been a while since we've taken a look at a motherboard on the channel, but today we have a brand new one to finally take a look at. Today, we're going to be taking a close look at the Gigabyte B650i Aorus Ultra motherboard. We'll take a look at what comes in the box, and then we'll go a bit more in depth with what actually comes on the motherboard and the features that you get. So, with all out of the way, let's get to unboxing. Opening the box, we're first greeted by the motherboard itself. We'll take a close look at that in just a second. We've also got some breakout cables for additional connectivity, which I'll show you where these plug in later in the video. We've also got this Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna, which you can use to connect to the rear of your motherboard. We've got two SATA data cables, one with a flat connector and also one with a 90 degree connector. So you can use these in order to connect your 2.5 and 3.5 inch drives. We've got a few M.2 screws. There's an included Gigabyte sticker. We've got an installation guide, which I would highly recommend referring to during your build, as well as some information for registering your motherboard for customer service, rewards, and more importantly, for RMA purposes. Lastly, we also get this little expansion card for more connectivity. We'll take a closer look at this later though. So that's everything that comes in the box. Now let's take a closer look at the motherboard itself. So here we have the Gigabyte B650i Aorus Ultra. It's an ITX form factor and uses the AM5 socket, specifically LGA1718 socket, which in comparison to its predecessor AM4, no longer uses a PGA socket, which means the pins are on the CPU instead of the motherboard. Instead now, they're on the motherboard, so you'll want to be very careful with these as they're very delicate. AM5 supports both Ryzen 7000 and 9000 series CPUs, however you may need to ensure your BIOS is updated to support more recent CPUs like the 9800X 3D. AM5 will reportedly support future generations of Ryzen much like AM4, which is good news if you're looking to invest in a platform that may have some pretty good longevity. I have a lot of BIOS update tutorials on the channel, but I will also be publishing a tutorial specifically for this motherboard, so make sure you're subscribed for when that goes live. Additionally, we have support for both AM4 and AM5 cooler mounting with these brackets and backplate. However, if your cooler has its own dedicated backplate, then you won't be able to use it as the backplate is fixed to the motherboard. As you can see, the motherboard also includes a full backplate which assists with your cooling, but we'll take a closer look at that when we look at our storage. In regards to our PCB, this motherboard has a 12 layer 2x copper PCB. For our power delivery, we have a direct 8 plus 2 plus 1 digital VR design and a 105 amp smart power stage. This should be more than sufficient for any Ryzen 7000 or 9000 series CPU, especially if you're looking to overclock which this chipset fully sports with unlocked clock and voltage control. Especially looking at this VRM heatsink design which is absolutely huge, so you should have no problems there. Moving on, here we have our two DDR5 DIMM slots. By JDAC standards, this motherboard supports up to 5200 speed DDR5, but you can potentially run up to 7200 speed, but this is not guaranteed and will vary greatly depending on your CPU. For best results, I would also recommend running this in dual channel mode for best performance, so running with two DIMMs and not one. You can just use one DIMM slot, but this may negatively affect your CPU performance as well as your overclocking potential. Next up, we have our PCIe slot for PCIe devices such as your GPU, capture cards, and more. This slot is a reinforced PCIe Gen 4x16 slot. Now, you may be missing out on PCIe Gen 5 support, but within this form factor, there's going to be compromises such as this. But with PCIe Gen 4 barely fully saturating the bandwidth already available, Gen 4 is absolutely fine for even the highest end GPUs. Next up, let's take a look at storage. As mentioned earlier, we have an M.2 slot on the back and this supports PCIe 4.0 x 4 with a backplate that not only helps cool your M.2, but also the VRM, so very useful for cooling the whole board. The front two M.2 slots connect directly to your CPU and the one on the back connects to your chipset, with one being PCIe 5.0 x 4 and one being PCIe 4.0 x 4. The front two slots are housed in this M.2 mezzanine card, which can be a little annoying to remove, but this is still useful in maintaining film as well, putting your drives under sustained read and writes for a lengthy amount of time, especially with this dedicated cooling fan. On this mezzanine card, you will also find some headers like your front panel audio, which is tucked under towards the VRM heatsink. We also have a 5 volt 3 pin ARGB header for your RGB devices, such as fans and LED strips. There's a breakout connector for your many breakout cables in the box. Moving on, let's take a look at our headers on the board. We have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel header for the front panel USB C port on your case a port for our expansion card. We have our power and reset connectors for our front panel power and reset buttons. We have a PWM breakout connector, which you can use with an included breakout cable to install more fans. Next to that, a USB 3.2 front panel for your regular USB ports on your case. Next to that, we have our 24 pin ATX motherboard power connector. Finally, we have an 8 pin EPS power for our CPU next to the only fully integrated PWM fan header for your CPU cooler. That's pretty much it for the motherboard itself, but we can also take a look at the rear I.O. available. Taking a look at our rear I.O., we have a display port and HDMI port for your display outs if you're using an iGPU, one USB Type-C port with USB 3.2 Gen 2 support. These red ports are USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports. The two blue ports are USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and then we have two USB 2.0 and 1.1 ports. 
We have one RJ45 port for a wired Ethernet connection, two SMA antenna connectors which you can use with the included Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna, a Q flash button for updating your motherboard's BIOS, and lastly we have two audio jacks with a line-out and mic port. Before we round up this video, let's finally take a look at this expansion card which you can use to expand your storage with support for four SATA 2.5 or 3 inch drives, another PWM breakout connector, and a 12 volt 4 pin RGB header. So that's it for the Gigabyte B650i AROS Ultra motherboard. The design of this motherboard is pretty interesting with its ITX form factor, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you found this video useful, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. Also, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. You'll find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.